Welcome back to Games Revealed. I'm James Nelson Brink, and we are one. Today, I want to talk about 10 things you must do when you get your Steam Deck. And this is a little guide to just help you know there's a couple things that will just make your life easier once you get your Steam Deck and do these things. It will just be, it, it's, it's niceties, and it will just set the course for a great decking time. So, before we get into it, I just want you to know that it covers both the game mode and desktop mode. A couple hardware pieces, a couple software pieces, uh, some guides and stuff like that. So uh, make sure to watch the whole thing. But you got to like, subscribe, bash that bell with your crowbar, and then we can get into it. Okay. Now, first up, there's a prerequisite. Buy some accessories. So if you haven't got your deck yet, probably get some accessories. There's some in the description below. They are affiliate, just to let you know. Bought every single one of them, and I like them. I've tested them. Uh, it's, there's memory cards, uh, carriers and stuff like that. I like what's down there. So let's get into number one on my list. And that is slap a screen protector on your deck when you first get it. And like I said, there are accessories in the description below. One of them is a screen protector. Now there's two different types of screen protectors. There are the regular screen protectors that are scratch resistant and make it so that, you know, don't scratch your deck screen. Then there's also anti-glare, anti-scratch uh, screen protectors. The anti-glare one's not as good. It just it makes your image a little fuzzy. But if you really have major issues with glare or don't like it at all, it's definitely worth it. It doesn't kill the image quality that much, but it was noticeable to me. This is also recommended by Andre from our community. And I'll say a couple of these that are recommended by our community and we'll go over a little bit more in the community recommended section but these are also ones i agreed with and so we slapped them into this list number two is update your steam os and steam client right away so once you get in get everything set up you know part of the setup process of setting up your steam deck you're setting up the wi-fi and everything well you're going to want to go into your settings and to the system and the update area check to see if there's an update most likely there is, and you're going to just download that update and then apply it and restart. Also, in the future, you're going to know that there's an update in the top right corner of your Steam Deck in game mode. There is going to be a little exclamation mark that's just going to sh shine up there. And it's typically meaning, hey, there's an update for your deck. So try to keep your deck updated as much as possible. You're going to have a great time if you do so because it adds new features, fixes bugs, and uh, some other things. Some of the bugs that's fixed in the past are stuff like the SD card, <laughs> the SD card essentially being bricked after a bad format. So it, it definitely can save some hardware, some software sometimes when you update. It's just always a good idea. There's also a beta track, and then there's also, I believe, like a developer track or something along those lines, where that gets updated frequently, it could introduce additional bugs, same thing with the beta, but if you are like to live life on the edge a little bit, go into that beta and uh, enjoy some extra features and extra uh, bug fixes before they come out on stable release. I just, you know, a little bit of caution there, just as a warning, I go with beta, I like beta, but um, I'm also a little bit more on the edge of things of tech. So, with that, Let's get into the SD cards that you need to have, which is on number three. Uh, first thing, after you've updated and everything, slap an SD card into your deck, format it, and start downloading stuff to it. Because there, especially if you have the 64 gigabyte version, there is not a lot of space in the Steam Deck. And so you're going to want to have most of your games, most of your stuff on the SD card. And honestly, in my opinion, it's a great experience no matter what. The only time it can get a little annoying is when, you know, you have to unpack a really large game and then it uh, can take a while depending on what kind of card you have. But uh, I, honestly, it's pretty good. I, I think it's a good idea to have the SD card and I think you won't regret things. Even with the 512 gigabyte version, it's still nice. I run a couple of different cards just and I and I kind of separate my games uh, into like I have a Resident Evil card because I have like eight Resident Evils and then I have uh, more action pack cards, RPG and whatnot. And then I also have like an emulator card. So all that kind of stuff I kind of just keep set up in my SD card and a holder. Which, speaking of, which is right here. 
And then number four is set up the quick access menu. And what's so important about this one is that there is a sweet spot for everything. And I think the sweet spot for the Steam Deck is running your refresh rate on your screen and the locked FPS at 45 or 40 at on most games. And I'd set the default to that. And then per game, you can go into your quick ac- access menu and then change that as you want. But a lot of games, most games, I will play with about 40, 45 FPS and refresh rate set. And then I also will enable the FSR that's at the bottom all the way up. I just enable it all the times. Some games, I've only run into like one or two games that have kind of a little bit of issues with this. Uh, but for the most part, you should be good doing that. Those are the two things. Maybe the third on the uh, quick access menu thing is at the very top. You can set that slider all um, like one or two over and you can get a little bit more information coming in about your performance so you can tweak your settings in the game. So you can see your FPS, you can see a couple of things and just getting those kind of set up right away and not have to think about it and you can see what your performance is as you get playing games and you can realize, oh, this is why it's laggy. Maybe I need to turn the settings down or maybe mess with something else. It also helps to you know show that, hey, that 40, 45 frames per second lock is working great. If it's only if you're getting on average like 30, then just lock that bad boy down to 30 when you're playing the game. But that's later on. And then we're just talking about the now. And speaking of the now, let's get into actually downloading a, downloading a game in number five on my list. And that is download and play Aperture Desk Job. The reason why I recommend this game is because it is essentially built for the Steam Deck. Yes, you can play it on your PC, but it really plays well on the deck, and it's only about an hour or two long. It's really short. You get to play as an engineer. You get to invent stuff. You get to invent shooting things and toilets and got to deal with all the bad things that go on at Aperture Science. Plus, you get to learn more about the story of like the Portal games, essentially what happens to uh, some certain main characters that you kind of just hear about in Portal So I definitely recommend that. It is free. It's awesome. Get done loading that thing right away. Now we are done with the game mode. Let's go into desktop mode. You can go into desktop mode by hitting your Steam button, going down to power, and going down to switch to desktop. Now, number six is install Proton GE. And this can be done through Discover app, which is a flat pack repository essentially for the Steam Deck. And you can go and find applications, all sorts of stuff. We'll get into that in a second. But you can get the Proton GE uh, downloader. And it's Proton Up QT, QT is, I believe, what it's called. And you uh, can start downloading different versions of Proton GE. And you can select those in your Steam client, uh, whether it's in desktop mode or game mode, in the compatibility areas of your settings per game. So in a game, you can go to your settings. You can go to the compatibility tab, and then you can switch between the different uh, protons. And that is a very big deal when you come across compatibility issues. If there's a game you want to play later down the road, it sucks to have to switch out of game mode into desktop mode, download the Proton GE, or just kind of just, you know, not be prepared. It's nice to have a couple of Proton GEs downloaded and, and cached in, and you can just go and switch between them whenever you need to when trying to get a game to work, and it's just it's just a little bit nicer. Most games work just fine, but you know what? It's just nice to be prepared. Okay, next up is number seven. Install applications via Flatpak. We talked about that Discover store, right? Well, there's a lot of different applications you can download from there, including video editing. Yes, this is a desktop. Yes, this is a PC. And you can video edit, audio edit. You can uh, download Chrome. I recommend, I like Chrome a lot. I'd recommend downloading Chrome. Even Edge, I like more than Firefox these days, but um, you do you. Uh, With that Chrome, with some of those browsers, you can also set up scripts to enable like YouTube to be a separate app or Netflix. Um, Discord, I believe, has its own separate app, so you can just download that. And then there's also OBS. So uh, there's a lot of different options that we have, and that Discover Store is nice to just extend the... Uh, just the abilities of the Steam Deck. And so definitely go in there and just download some of the apps you need. And then you can link those um, by either going into the uh, application menu, which is in the bottom right, and right-clicking on any application and add to Steam. Or you can go into Steam and and, uh, go into the bottom left of the Steam client on the desktop and hitting the add non-Steam game 
uh, or, you know, hit the button, hit add non-Steam game, and then you can browse through and add the games or add games or applications that you want to the Steam client, and then that makes it visible in game mode. Okay. Next up is, uh, we're, we're talking about extensibility, it's extending it, making sure that you're just prepared. And, and this next one is the same thing, essentially. But we're flipping it from applications to games with number eight, and that is setting up more games. Yes, there are games outside of the Steam client. There are games that Steam does not have. I know, it's a shock, it's a shock. But the first one is like setting up your emulators, right? Right. There's some good classic SNES, N64, PlayStation games, uh, Switch games, all that stuff. You can do that with EmuDeck, and I'm going to have a, a guide on that, a tutorial in the near future. I don't have one yet on that one. But it is a fairly straightforward thing to install if you want. I will have links in the description. A lot of the stuff I'll have links in the description below. And uh, next up is uh, set up your PlayStation Remote Play. You can also set up Xbox Remote Play. You can set up Xbox <laughs> Cloud Streaming Service. I'm going to have other things also like uh, PlayStation uh, Plus, hopefully in, in the near future, uh, guide. And then uh, you can set up the Epic Games Launcher if you want to play games on from the Epic Games library, like, they've been giving us tons of games. Why not play some of those? I do have a guide on that, a tutorial. You can go check those out. I'll have stuff in the description. Um, there's also, there's the Lutris. There's there's just, so, there's so many other options for downloading more games from the Ubisoft store, or whatever it is. Um, might as well get that to work, right? So, more games e equals more fun. And you and with those guides, it will show you how to get it all running from getting it installed on desktop mode and playing in game mode. Okay, next up is number nine. Hook and this is this is where you can do this either in desktop mode, maybe in game mode. I kind of recommend it more in game mode, both these last two. Hook up a mouse and keyboard, headphones, or a controller right away so that you just don't have to think about it in the future. You want to play a game with someone else? Uh, because there's games that you can play two or three player on the, the deck itself, if you have multiple controllers hooked up to it, you can. And you hook it up to a TV, play some Castle Crashers. You know, there's a lot of different games that you can play uh, four player on a TV or even, I mean, it's going to be a little small on the deck, but you could do it on the deck on a nice vacation. Uh, just, it's nice to have things prepared and ready. So make sure to uh, hook those things up. I love a keyboard and mouse a lot. I've been doing it more and more with my travel kit. I also like having headphones. I have my AirPods right here, I they don't work great. I'll be honest. Like sometimes it's easy to hook them up, sometimes it's not. But once they are hooked up, they do work okay. Um, but other headphones uh, connect Bluetooth wise very easily. Okay, next up is number ten, and this is kind of a lazy one for me. Uh, just let it sit there and download the games. Um, I will let it sit there and be on as long as I can overnight or something like that. Uh, there's just a bunch of different ways to do this or while I'm working on my computer, I'll make sure the deck is on downloading stuff. Uh, that's just one of like the kind of the last preparations is just make sure you have enough games downloaded that will suffice you for a while. So you're not having to think, mm, I want to play that game. I better, well, I'm going to have to download and wait. And then you waste the, you know, half hour that you had to play that game downloading it and then maybe you could play next time but next time you know you're going to want to play something else uh, and don't lie you know we all have the massive steam deck library and if you do not there's a cell around the corner you're going to get there no matter what if you're a new to pc gaming you're going to get to the point where you're like the rest of us and wondering hey when am i going to clear my 300 game uh just backlog i mean i've beaten a lot of games on steam I have a huge backlog, and you will too. And hopefully this whole kind of guide, like this uh, 10 items, do help you out. Now, I want to go into a couple of community choices uh, real quick. Uh, this one's coming from Rice. Print or have someone print a lifesaver. And that is a device right here. It's this little thing. It fits in your case. And then when the deck, like if you're opening it up and the deck falls out, this will catch um, as it's wrapped in the uh, little strap that's in your case. Um, it is a lifesaver in all its manner. Um, I'm printing a bunch out. I'm probably going to do some giveaways soon. Um, you could also find a buddy, or if you already have a printer, I will have a, uh, a, a link to the print file in the description below. Um, if I didn't mention it, Kranos is the one that recommended the Proton GE thing. Uh, thank you, Kranos. 
And then also Andre recommends that if you are on the accessory buying uh, portion right now to get an A2 card, um, I do have one in the description below. It's just going to make uh, that unpacking of, let's say, Spider-Man took me two hours to unpack on my SD card. It was a, uh, an A1 card. And what this is is essentially simultaneous read-write. So when you're unpacking, you're both reading and writing at the same time. When you're downloading, you're only writing for the most part. So there's not simultaneous um, read and write activity going on in your card. So you're going to get faster downloads then you will unpacking the game. And that's where the A2 cards become much more useful. Um, yeah, get that card in the description below. And then Cobalt Chris uh, recommends using bottles. Instead of directly launching Windows EXEs from your desktop mode, it makes it easier for game mode. Um, bottles essentially makes it easy to wrap an application inside of its own little container and then you can apply different protons wines different versions of things to it and adding it to steam is really easy and it just it makes things a little bit better i haven't done a tutorial on this one yet because uh i've been fine so far doing it otherwise but it, it really does make it just that much better so check out bottles um that's in the desktop mode and really, that's it. Uh, hopefully, you're going to enjoy your new Steam Deck that you're all prepped up. Hopefully, this is everything that you need. But if it is not, let me know in the comments below. Is there something I'm missing? What else would you recommend to get started when you first get your deck? You're going to have a good time with this list, but it could even get more enhanced as I'm not. Uh, the... I'm not a god of Steam deckness. I am just a common person like you. But th as a collective, we can do it so i want to know in the comments below is there anything else i'm missing what else would you recommend and so with that thank you guys for watching check out my other links below in the description i know you've already checked out the description so much but there's more down there and with that thank you guys for watching check out my other videos and i'll catch you guys later peace out later also check out the discord if you uh you're gonna have a steam deck community there and also pc gaming and gaming community so check that out too later